Hey, everybody. Uh, Melissa here, as well as... Woo woo! 50! <laughs> Apparently, we were told this was our 50th episode, and we were told we needed to come in and record it. And uh, nobody told us what to record it about. So <sighs> we're going to talk about, I don't know, the year, holidays, life. You're listening to the Latch Mama podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, business owner and tired mom of five. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, nursing, parenting, and all things motherhood. I feel like I need a little party blower and a yeah. little hat. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting though. It's, you know, <laughs> it's been a year. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about like what on earth has happened like this, not, not to be like Debbie Downer at the beginning, but like last year at this time I was pregnant with a pregnancy that didn't stick uh we were we had recently just moved our family like to kind of it's not in the middle of nowhere but it feels like it once you're back there i had left like a community my kids had left their friends we were still very much in the pandemic didn't have vaccines yep. yet um i i don't know it's it's it feels like it was just yesterday but then it also feels like it's been like 10 years since then yeah it's, it's crazy. You know, and there's things that still remind you that it's like still here and it's yeah. still going uh-huh. on. I mean, you're holding I, my baby. That is that's my baby Lindy's holding. Yeah, not um, mine. He was up at four thirty this morning. So for those of you who have experienced pregnancy loss, there is magic on the other side. Very fast magic. I think so I like cute. literally got pregnant with him like ten days after I stopped the miscarriage. It's crazy. It was quick. It was really quick. I feel like any year that you're pregnant too, there's like, I don't know, big lessons. COVID pregnancy isn't fun either. I don't know. But yeah, what's going on in your world? You have a kid home quarantined? Yep. Kid home quarantined. Apparently the her little friend neighbor is as well. So I'm assuming it was a bus thing. Okay. Um. So they call you know. everybody that's on the bus? Uh, no, apparently they got their little way to figure out who was sitting who. And if you're within, you know, whatever amount of feet you get emailed and pretty sure my twins were right in front of her, but they're fine. Um, (laughs) wow. I don't, I, yeah, I don't really understand how it all works, but. So what happens if you hadn't seen the email? Do they call you too? Or they just expect you to check your email on Sunday night? Uh, I guess they do. Cause I guess I would send a kid today and. They would be reported like that they attended and they would probably call me and say, you need to come pick your kid up. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So she's home doing her thing. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. you're here. So I'm here. Managed that's... to. It's not always easy and it doesn't always work out like really well. I think the last time was much harder, but reached out to my sitter. It's like, what other hours can you offer me because I have a kid at home with no symptoms but this is a situation she's pretty chill yeah. so she was like just, I can do Tuesday Thursday Friday like uh, whatever you want so she's coming full days there and my yeah. husband and I were able to split the other two days and figure that out it's just but. crazy because like okay so like COVID came out and we all started trying to like learn what the rules were and could you get it from surfaces and you know, what are the CDC guidelines? And then, so there was all of this guidance and then suddenly kids start back up at school here and you start getting these like quarantine emails and telephone calls with zero guidance in terms of how to like what you do. So technically you're here. I mean, we're masked when we're here. We, we do all the precautions. You're vaccinated. Hopefully mm-hmm. that's not a big deal that I shared that. But it's like, <laughs> but like, where, where do you draw the line? Yep. Like she could yep. technically be at home with COVID. She's, I mean, not, I mean, who knows? Yep. But, but you're here, but you're here, you're vaccinated. I don't know. It's just all so freaking confusing. And it's such, you know what it is? You know what it is? It is more mental energy that is placed on I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of fathers out there that are holding on to it too. But the amount of a mental energy that it adds yeah. back on 
a mother's plate where we've been the ones that have been at home schooling our kids and like Mm -hmm. missing work and like so many women have left the workforce and then suddenly they're also like oh hey by the way your kids are going back to school but they're not really going back to school and they can go home for a week and if they go home for a week should you be working should you not be yeah you hope you have really flexible child care that doesn't really see harm in coming and taking care of your kid Mm -hmm. Now I have to say for the most like moms that I've talked to, mm-hmm. whether it's at the bus stop or just kind of in the neighborhood at the beginning, it was kind of like, well, well, you know, what do we do? And that quarantine yep. thing says to like, don't see people literally for like 10 days uh-huh. is what they tell you. Even, oh, and they want you like separated. They recommend they need to be alone. But, e- but, but you now, know nothing about the exposure. You're giving nothing. no information it's a about a possible this. exposure possible. So, now, to be honest, most of the time when I do talk about it at the bus stop, people are just kind of like, uh, that line mm-hmm. is what kind of what we talk about. So yeah. it's like, oh, you know, Nellie's possibly been exposed and now I've possibly been exposed to a possibly exposed, like, yeah. like it can go on and on and on and on. And really, for the most part, where I've talked to people, you kind of, we're just drawing the line at symptoms. Yeah. Like, you know, um... If your kid's like symptom free at home. Yeah, but then you, how many, like, how I, many of these kids are asymptomatic mm-hmm, too? I know, but you can't, I don't know how you live life like that. Yeah. We did our so first So you just like, hang out at home, like all, I can't go anywhere because I yeah. might, well, I so might my, have COVID. Like my homeschool kids that are at <laughs> home, like they've been to the zoo. The older two go to forest school, which is outside masked all day long. There's no indoor option. Mm. Um, and they keep their masks on. But then like this weekend, we did an indoor swim meet, which <laughs> there were moments where I was kind of a little shaky because we hadn't done anything, yeah. you know, and yeah, it was, uh, but I was like looking at the kids behind the blocks and I was like, nobody's masked, but yet they're going to go to school tomorrow and they're going to be masked all day at school. But like they were supposed to be masked if they weren't swimming. And like I made my kids mask if they weren't swimming, but nobody else. I'm like, I mean, some other families did as well. It was just it, I often feel like we're all living on like different planets, like like just different rules for like, yeah, which is fine. And like, we're going to respect just like everything else in motherhood and parenting. We're going to respect how people do it. But at the same time, like the amount of judgment, like I posted a picture of my kids before they swam and I was like, Oh, people are not going to be happy that they don't have masks on. Like they're going to think like we're those people. But then like, I, I I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It is. It's just like another way that you have to navigate another like mental, like, is it better that they go swim in the swim meet to know that like this pandemic hobby that they've had where they've literally been busting their butts at swim practice and mm-hmm. like doing all of this. Is it better for them to go to a meet and see those gains and see the fact that like they're improving and they're getting better and risk possible exposure? Or do I just keep them at home in this like mundane up down you know type of world i don't know it's hard yeah what's happening in latch mama land oh all the things what have we done this year right so we broke the warehouse during um world breastfeeding week and that is not that is not on the warehouse that is 100 percent on me and managing and our amazing amazing company or amazing community that showed up for us and we got through it yeah but there wasn't enough time between world breastfeeding week and black friday to hire people to change systems to get it all set up so we had to pull back on black friday which has been a big thing for me like the idea that like we weren't like, yes, let's do this. Like Lindy and I had planned this amazing tiered sale. We knew it's what people wanted. And then we had to restructure it all. Yeah. It was hard to do that. And that's one of our favorite things to do is those tiered sales. And yeah, with the growth and kind of what will come in now, it, it teeters on that, like very, very steep cliff of, of just completely wrecking things. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I f- it's so yeah. hard. I feel like I've learned that lesson in motherhood that like, sometimes you just have to tread water. Like sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, like especially during COVID, like maybe the kids weren't going to hit the same goals or maybe they weren't going to be able to do the things that I had dreamed of for them to be doing when they were seven or, you know, six or whatever age they were during COVID. 
but then it happens here and we have to tread water a little bit and we have to like make sure everything's going to be okay so we can continue to grow in the future and it is hard it is literally like going and training for a marathon and like knowing you're injured and deciding to pull out and run the marathon in six months i mean that's truly what it was here and uh i don't know it's a lot to process but it's good it's good stuff it is good it is good yeah navigating those ups and downs and trying to make the right decision is really really difficult yeah you know it's i don't know i guess it's just motherhood in general all right so tell me something you've learned this year Something where are you gonna I've go learned? with it? You're, I, I know, I know where you are now in your like Netflix streaming world. <laughs> <laughs> Lindy recently yeah. went down a very. How, how did you even land there to begin with? I really did, don't. know. Did you just read an article? I really don't know. I don't. So there's like I'd, true. Crime. I'd like to know it was there for a reason, so, but <laughs> so. I I normally am the one that like when I want to turn all of it off, like when I want to turn like motherhood off and latch mama off, I sometimes turn to current events because they fascinate me and like what's going on in the world. And she's stuff like, like my that. daily news source. Yeah. So, I don't like the news. So I'll come in and I'll be like, Lindy, <laughs> did you see that this happened? I'm like, no. and she's like completely <laughs> oblivious to what's happening in the world. So I'd like to really kind of know, like, how do you check out? Do you How do, do I something, check do you do out? Something healthier than like learn what about what's happening in the world. Mm. How do I check out? I'll either find something to watch. I do like the thriller. Like I do love the crime. Like that okay. kind of okay. investigation stuff. Okay. I really do. Um, but I'm often just so tired to even like to get anything. there to find there. Yeah. Um, I will do books that are like literally just crap not yeah there's yeah. like not much to them um whether they are thrillers or something like that yeah. i will do that um or it's like creative yeah i'll do something creative but i end, but i ended up i don't even know how i saw it so probably okay, on, on a so, so back up so like i th- i think that i think that they did so what is the family's name the Turpins. The Turpins, who had all the bunch of kids, and it was a very, very tragic, terrible, terrible story. But Lindy came in and she was like, Melissa, have you heard about this family? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, Lindy. I'm like, This was a really long time ago. No, like, but I'd seen it a while, but yeah, it but po- got, recently popped back I think, up. I think because... she like, got interviewed. One of the kids got interviewed or yeah. something. And I had read just enough to keep up with Lindy a little bit in the conversation, but then she <laughs> took this like giant deep dive, and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, you know more than me. Well, then the next day, Lindy comes in and she goes, Hey, did you know about that Elizabeth Smart girl? And I was like, Lindy, what are you doing in your free time? And she's like, And then there was this other one in in Cleveland. And I was like, What? Lindy went down like the deep, deep, deep dive of women who have it a whole lot worse than her in life. I mean, is that what we have to? Well, now that I look back on it and I'm like, I think this is where. It was, I don't even know what the right word is to say, but it just kind of put me in my place a little bit on those really hard days that you complain about this or this or being overwhelmed and it gets to you and you go down that like deep, Mm -hmm. dark path of worry or anxiety. And yet I'm here reading about, you know, these women that managed to escape and save uh-huh. themselves after years of just unimaginable abuse. Trauma and abuse. And I'm like, I can choose to wake up, you know. Yeah. I have that choice. Not to like, you know, put down the things that I've been through that I go through. However, it gives you a little perspective on Absolutely. life. Um, so I'm kind of done with that road. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I and read I, and a I, lot and, I, and but, I don't mean to laugh, but the, and it's the not intensity funny. of how much she did in such a short <laughs> period of time with how much I know that she has on her plate. I mean, I stayed up really late and she learned about all of them. Like, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of just trauma and abuse and yeah, I read three, three books. One she one read, was like, pretty three books short in like one it was night. Ve- no, it was a couple days because then I went very... into like the next week into therapy and I just read like the book the night before and like 
wondering what oh this God, woman this. is gonna like so, look so at me goes, or say so goes, hey so uh so i i know what i'm gonna talk about in therapy tomorrow and i was like well what what are you gonna talk about she's like well I feel a lot better about like my situation and like what I've been through now. And I was like, Oh, that's so great that it must be so healing. She's going to be so happy to hear about it. She's like, but let me tell you how I got myself there. And then I was like, are you going to tell her? Are you going to tell her that you've spent the last 48 hours in these deep, deep, dark, dark places? And then he was like, yeah, I am. I'm going to see what she says. What did she say? Lindy? She just looked at me <laughs> and waited a bit. Oh my and God. And then I felt really crazy. <laughs> and then she's like, it kind of puts a, you know, just a good perspective on gratitude. <laughs> I was like, yep, going to be grateful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I wonder, I bet that, that long pause was probably one of the better long pauses you've I think had. it was good. Those long pauses are terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, this is so funny. But anyways, now I've gotten off of it. And... You've got me on a different direction. Uh-huh. Some true crime stuff. True crime. Not as dark. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. But um, yeah. I don't know. You know, I I did I did the Squid Games. I don't know if I can do that. I think you can do it. The Squid Okay, Squid Games was fascinating to me. Simply because I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it because I didn't like the whole like death aspect mm-hmm. of it, which is why a lot of people don't watch it. But if you can get past that, yeah. the actual like interpersonal relationships and friendships and somewhat manipulation and just connection aspect of it, yeah. I found completely fascinating. Okay. So you should do that one next. All right. Especially, I mean, at this point, that is nothing compared to some of the stuff you've read and watched at this point. That's true. And it's all like Korean, so it's not really like gory when they die. Yep. I'm not saying Wait, that. I got to do like subtitles, don't I? Or uh, something? I, I dubbed it. Okay. So it dubs into English. So I didn't really read the subtitles. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. I will do. So, all right. Best thing that's happened this year. I'm totally putting you on the spot. <sighs> that's such a hard question. I know. I tell you on my first date, I asked Eric questions like this and he told me he didn't do favorites what? and I thought he was such an a-hole. Like a favorite or like a favorite like, color or like, like yeah, a favorite like, so of what's whatever. Your favorite food? And he's <clears throat> like, I don't do favorites. Okay. Like, where's the favorite place you've traveled? I don't mm. do favorites. And I was like, this guy is an a-hole. <laughs> like, 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 literally, like, who says that to somebody on a first date? I'm like, can we just at least have a conversation? Still to this day, he doesn't do favorites. He has a favorite ice cream. It's butter pecan. Oh, okay. And he has a favorite, like, pair of shorts from Macy's that he buys 24 of every year when they go on sale. And he has a favorite shirt. What are these shorts? They're just like linen shorts. But he doesn't buy them when they okay. come out, even though he knows that he loves them. He buys them at the season's sale. end. Okay. Which they've, they come individually from different bags on okay. our front porch. Um, and then he has one shirt from Walmart that he buys, which the new Walmart <laughs> app, if anybody has checked it out, <laughs> I, I don't like it. I don't know things, but I do not like the new Walmart app. But it's really funny. Like as one of his shirts becomes available at a Walmart, mm-hmm. it like dings his phone and then it gets sent Are to you us. Serious? But it's really funny because it gets mailed to us from like a Walmart like checkout bag that just gets like thrown wait, in a wait, 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 wait. So It automatically like gets ordered. Well, no, I mean, he's he got to go it. and order it. Okay. Order it, but it's really <clears> funny because it's literally picked from like it's not coming from a warehouse. It's like picked from a from floor way. and some Walmart in Indiana. And it comes like like in a Walmart bag oh, wow. shoved in a poly and it shows up on our doorstep. That's but anyways, really so he has a favorite pair of shorts and a favorite pair of shirt. For, like he wears yeah. his linen shorts and his Walmart shirt and his favorite ice cream. Okay. That's about it. <laughs> I think I think if you were to ask him his favorite place to buy groceries, he'd probably say Walmart. Probably. But that's it. He doesn't do any other favorites. Okay. But you're allowed to have All a right, favorite so moment have from a favorite. there. Favorite. Favorite moment or just kind of a thing? A thing. Yeah. Okay. I've really enjoyed. I think you you come out of that like newborn toddler yeah. world. Don't and now know what that's like at all. I know. It'll be soon. Unless that like you know, two percent hit, hit hits. Nope. Um, Six is all we're doing. Seeing the kids and really taking a moment to watch them and see them find their thing. Yeah. Um, has been pretty cool. Um, I know Lennox is you know, still figuring it out, but he loves his soccer. It's like a rec team. Yeah. 
but I've enjoyed Gabe watching Gabe kind of grow in his swimming. And I'm not talking about the swimming. I'm talking about like being in charge of going behind the block and paying attention to what event, what heat it is, what lane it is when I need to put my goggles in and I need to get in the water. So that growth. And then um, Nora rides horses and just, she would live there all day. If I dropped her off at 8am, I could pick her up at like 8pm. And then Nellie's found a bit of dance and she we really have so likes dance. Kids, by the way. You're so, still going. What about I'm twins? still going. The twins, we have yet to get into any anything yet. Yeah. Um, they're five. We don't normally start till a little bit later just because we're I don't know, I get so overwhelmed. But yeah. um I have enjoyed slowing down and watching them. Um I it's can't just brought me a lot of joy. Having that. the youngest be five. Because like I look at my five year old right now, like she's totally self sufficient like Mm-hmm. Not totally self sufficient. I'm not going to like. I, she could probably run the household they, better than I can. Let's but be But they keep themselves alive. But, I don't know what they're going to eat, but yeah, or if they'd be able to wipe their she butt. She can't open but, her spin drifts that she steals from me. That's oh. one of the things that she struggles with. She can't open a pop top, which is good. I mean, oh. she can't drink beer then, I guess. But she, could, <laughs> uh, she can't. She can't get into the spin drifts either. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We're still. We're so in the yeah. Well, what yeah. about you? I mean, I think I get in trouble if I don't say it's that thing sitting on your on your lap right now. <laughs> but I mean, he's great. But we're just hundred percent in the trenches. Yeah. Seven weeks old today, so yeah. Um, I don't know. It's been it's it's been like I think when I look back on my life, I think this year is probably going to be like the largest like growth year, mm-hmm. in the sense that you know we left a we left a community. I mentioned that earlier. We moved out to a farm you know, the majority of the staff here started working from home. Um, I started taking care of a lot less people and things Mm -hmm. got a little quieter, um, which has allowed me to kind of, you know, learn what's important and dig in a little bit and focus on my family and, you know, here a little bit less just because it's, it's hard to be Mm -hmm. here, but not here. You know, the warehouse team has kind of created their own little family at this point. Um, I don't know. It's been, it's been a really quiet, but important year. I feel like it's a lot of change. It's a ton of change. change. Um, but it's really good. And like, like you said, this about the swimming thing, like this weekend, it was so nice. Like we haven't, I haven't done anything with my kids in so long. Like we've, yeah. you know, we've been locked down. We've been enjoying the farm. It's been great. But um, seeing them and seeing something that they've worked so hard on and feel they feel good about themselves. They and, did amazing. Yeah. it was. We, so we have this like neat mobile app and I have your kids starred. So yeah, like I get I the, starred too. I get Aww, the updates guys. <clears throat> and, um, I just, I don't know. Yeah, no, Nathan, it's really cool seeing them come in. I mean, I really have no idea what their time is, but then sometimes if they've swum it before, you yeah. see like dropped five seconds or yeah. whatever. Nathan had two events where and, he dropped uh, like 24 seconds. Which so he's incredible. Like, he's and like, it's my- so hard to see that from the week to week, the day to day practice. And then yeah. they hop in there and I'm like, and I thought like, I thought you did well like last year, which you did. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's really cool to I see that yeah. progress. It's cool. Cause I mean, since my kids are homeschooled and you know what it's like it's Mm -hmm. there's in some ways they have less rules in life and less structure but in some ways we're on them constantly Mm -hmm. and they don't really have a place as much to kind of set goals and you know there's no certificates you know at the end of the year for perfect attendance or anything like there's nothing yeah other than our love you know that they get (laughs) <laughs> and I mean, my kids yeah. are incredibly entitled with other things, but it's really, really cool to watch Nathan's big thing this weekend is he's been, if anybody knows about swimming and year round swimming, summer swim is definitely fun. Like the neighborhood swim teams and then this year round swim teams are more intense, but he doesn't know that he doesn't get it, but he, all he wants to do is make summer swim team champs, which he hasn't been able to do yet because he missed his eight year old year because of COVID. Yeah. But, uh, he got a time at the meet this weekend that won't count for summer. He has to swim it again in summer, but summer's five months away. Yeah. But, uh, I mean the, the kid almost cried of happiness and I've never seen him like that before in my life. What event was it again? 50 back. Okay. So it's just, it's cool. Like it's fun. It's fun to watch him like realize that he's getting stronger. 
I don't know. It's those little wins that your kids get that like if you're in the moment and you can get yourself there with them, it's the coolest thing ever. Like, yeah, does not make me want to have a seventh, but because <laughs> six is plenty, but it's really, really, yeah. really cool. So those of you who are like in the trenches and in yeah. those like baby stages right there where mm-hmm. all you get is maybe a random smile, it gets so much fun. Yeah. So fun. It gets harder too, but it gets fun. Yeah, definitely. My 13 year old was a mess this weekend, but and I don't think he's showered in four days. Is he a mess, like growing, grumpy mess? Yeah, I think so. That's the one but thing. But it's cool. Too. I love, like, in the last year, bunch of years, bunch and of even years. just with a kiddo on the spectrum, like, we, like, there's feelings all over our house, uh-huh. and they're good, and they're okay, and, like, we <laughs> learn how to communicate with them, right? <laughs> don't laugh. I at love me. it how you're convincing yourself that I they're am. good and, and fun and great. Um, but he will. He'll come tell me. It's and the he's feelings like, that I'm laughing about, guys, not the. Yeah. And he's I'm kids. like, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in my brain and in my body. But like, I don't. OK, time out for a second. And like, this is not I all the time. Even, I can't even figure out like somebody's having to teach me what it's like to figure out what's going on in my brain. And but my what body. I appreciate. I love that. Is like he doesn't know and that's OK. So he says he's like, I don't know. But like, I'm off and like. Is this Lennox? Or yeah, Gabe? Lennox. How Which cool is, is that, weird. that you've created Cause an I'm like, environment? And then I'm like, well, is it something that happened? And he's like, no, nothing happened. I'm like, okay, well, like, did you get in a fight with Gabe? And so, he's like, no, I just... And I'm like, okay, it's probably growing and it's tired and it's feelings and emotions with puberty that really come from nothing caused them. It's just part of life. So he'll like go to bed early and like it's a whole new day the next day. That's like totally different. But it's nice to be able to like kind of pinpoint that you know because if something created it we can talk about it you know what's really cool though so, like lindy and i have talked about this multiple times because her kids are a little bit older than mine all of my children caroline not really but they get in funk so like they're amazing mm-hmm. they're polite they're kind they're empathetic they're who i am trying to encourage them to be and then all of a sudden for like a week, two weeks, sometimes even three weeks, they are everything but that. They are, you know, grumpy and they're volatile and they're emotionally up and down and they're not sleeping well and they don't want to eat well and like it's just a completely different child. Yeah. And I remember the first time, first time it used to happen, I would look at Lindy and I'm like, why are they off? And she'd be like, they're probably just growing. And I'm like, that's so weird. But what's really cool about that is it almost seems like at some age, I'm not there yet, but it seems like you're getting there, that they realize that they feel off. Like Nathan is just now getting to the point where I can look at him and be like, bud, like this is not proper behavior. Like what is going on in your mind? And he'll just kind of look at me and shrug it off. But it seems cool that they can find words to it eventually, maybe. Do you want me to take him? I can put him on the boob. Do you think he wants to eat? No, but I can put him on All so right. he can be quiet. Are you? Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, buddy. What's wrong? I oh didn't want to give him gosh. a dirty passy either. So It's okay. <gasps> oh, you have the hiccups. Oh. All right, you've got to talk for a second. Do you want to okay. talk about a giveaway? Let's talk about our 50th episode thing. Yeah, but I don't. I I should have paid attention, Kennedy. <laughs> All right, what are we giving away, Kennedy? So we need you guys to go leave a review. <laughs> Hopefully, it's a good review. Yeah, uh, there's better episodes. Leave than us this an one. honest We're one. Kind of just give us some feedback. Uh, give us some topics. I'm too postpartum to read it right now. I'll let other people read it. Like Kennedy, where are they myself. leaving this review? Oh. On Apple Podcasts. Hi. And we're gonna do. We're gonna do. We're gonna uh, select. Yeah, we're going to select two or three random reviews. What? Okay. And then we're going to send you a special prize. Yeah. So you got about a us. week. I love it how we're like advertising we're aver- our Virginia <laughs> peanuts. Can you eat What them? is it? They're the chocolate covered peanuts we get from the brokerage company every year. These are the good ones? Yes. But you can't just buy. I feel like I asked you this last time and well, you can't just buy them, right? Well, they're from the Virginia diner. So did you guys know right, that we'll Virginia was the peanut capital of the world? Everybody know that? I mean, I feel like if you, you live in, I feel like 
I was about to say, I feel like if you live in Virginia, you just know that. You didn't know that? Um, No, but uh, you know me. I Apparently, I don't I don't know Have a whole lot gone, of news like, and the back history. way to the Outer Banks? Because you go past the Virginia Diner. Oh, like, yes. Through, like Ivor and stuff, you know? Yes. Yeah. I'm just not a history. You are. You're it's, into the history. Okay, the I don't, I don't, I'm like I don't, the complete I don't, opposite. I don't think it's a history thing. I think we still are. I think we produce more peanuts than any other state. Well, not like it's done, but just like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think history is the right word. You mean like <laughs> statistics? I don't know. Maybe. Fun facts. Fun facts. Fun facts. Virginia creates more peanuts. Okay. Than anybody else. That is Apparently. pretty cool. They're really good. You should have one. <clears throat> I will, but I don't want to like eat and I'll have one. After. I literally save like 10,000 calories a year in my like yearly just for calorie these. budget just for that container of peanuts because I eat them all. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, they are good. Yeah. Like I really save calories. Um, they are good. What else? Right. Anything else? What, do what we else tell in all life? The people's piece of advice. A piece of advice. Like your mom advice. Like your mom lesson you've learned this year. <clears throat> um... This year for me is, I think it revolves, revolves around balance. Okay. I think. Um, as like the more kids we've had. <laughs> we have so many kids. So many kids. Um, kind of that like priority list starts to change a bit. And I really kind of puts in focus like what's what's more important? Where do I want to spend my time? Um, that kind of thing. And then also I always want to do things really, really well, like uh -huh. maybe even perfect sometimes, no. which I know you, yeah. I know that, but as yeah. a mom, you know, and it's like, well, if I'm not putting a hundred percent into my kids, I'm failing that direction. If I'm not putting a hundred percent, you know, all the time into work, I'm failing that. And then of course there's like home things and this and that, and this and that. And it's like, have you gotten to the perfection uh, chapter? No, and I. You're reading? Um, no, just got done with the anxiety and worry and uh -huh. all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was good. Um, Lindsay so, and I are reading the same book right now. So really, just knowing that I do my best, and in that time that I have with the kids, that I'm present and mm -hmm. you know I'm not worrying that I should be here and should be here because then I'm just kind of wasting time, you know. I always say that I'm going to buy a flip phone. I think 2022 may be my flip phone year. Like you're going to get rid of that? I'm going to get rid of my, like, I'm not going to get rid of my iPhone. My iPhone's going to like go somewhere when I get into the house. Okay. But like maybe have a flip phone for like emergencies maybe. Okay. I don't know. It's really hard because so much of our company communication happens outside of work hours. Yeah. I don't know. I've got to figure it out though. Cause I'm such a better mom when I'm not in 17 places. Like you're saying, like yeah. I let go of the perfection thing. There is nothing perfect about any aspect of my life, but I've got to figure out the whole, like, I mean, 10, can you imagine what it was like to be a mom 10 years ago? Like, I, I don't know. Or like, back when we were kids. I feel like the second I don't want to deal with something, I can pick up my phone. Like, yep. or like the second I like, there has to be some sort of chemical thing that happens in your brain when you look at social media or, mm -hmm. you know, I distract. Yeah. Like if things are crappy at home, I can look at work and be like, oh, things are great there. Look what I've created. If things are bad at work. I can look at home and be like, look at these amazing kids. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a good balance there, but. I don't know. I feel like there needs to be, I don't know. I mean, I can turn off notifications and stuff. I mean, I can do a much better job without getting rid of my phone, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I understand. And that, Shh, why are you so gross? <laughs> I, love I you. bet he's tired. He really didn't sleep a whole lot. Um, and like on, we do most of our stuff through WhatsApp for work. Mm -hmm. And, well, Kennedy, come get this baby. Their twelve hours is when our it's sleep time. Okay. So, um, it's finding. 
I don't even know if Kennedy knows how to hold a baby. Oh, sweet Uncle Kennedy. So they're like the flip 12 hours. So in the beginning, and there are things for work that need to get done and need to get answered. But Mm -hmm. I do remember, and I don't know, know if you said it exactly that way, but really like there's not these massive emergencies. And, you know, if a couple messages come through like late night for work, it's like 11, 1130, like it's probably going to be okay if I answer them in the morning, yep. you know, now there's some things that we're working on and I'll take care of them, but it's being okay and kind of setting those boundaries and, you know, figuring out what can wait and what can't. Um, but you can really get wrapped up into that like <laughs> all day yeah. long. Yeah. I mean, um, I think that that's just a great lesson, like in motherhood in general, like you have yeah. got to learn how to let things go. Yeah. Like you've got to learn on like what's what can best. wait and what can't. Yeah. And what's best for your family. And, yeah. you know, I think everybody would agree that a present mom is better, you know, that may not be perfect is better than, you know, a mom right. that's split in 17 different directions. Yep. So that's my goal for 2022. All right, what, well then what's your advice from this year? Oh. I feel your like as thing. well, I mean, I feel like as we start restarting from COVID, because I think eventually that's what's gonna happen. Like in the next six months, things are gonna try and get back to normal. I would really like us to kind of regain, or especially me, regain regain some of that or regain? No. Maintain. That's the word. Guys, postpartum brain. <laughs> maintain <laughs> some of that slower pace. I think that it's taught us a lot. I think that being at home with our families and slowing down a bit and needing less things, you know, needing less pictures on social media of, you know, going here, going there, experiencing this, experiencing that. So much of it can be actually done within the family. Yeah. Um, And I want to really kind of lean into that and lean into, you know, my kids' relationships with each other and, you know, growing there as much as we can, as opposed to feeling like we need to do all of the things. Yep. So, I but I also want to travel some in 2020. I'm like, I'm ready to show my kids the world too. Mm. Maybe not the world in 2022. Maybe just. Things. Where would you take them first? I don't know. Nathan wants to see the Grand Canyon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have a really good. Um, we have a really good nanny right now. One of our few that we have who's in college who doesn't have kids who's like traveled the world. So like, I want to use every single aspect I can of her time with our family in terms of just and go and go yeah. and have her come with us and help me manage our situation as much as we can. But I don't awesome. know. We have to keep things latch mama moving forward. <coughs> have to keep the kids healthy. I mean, anytime yeah. I plan a trip, everybody, get, I tried to go to Legoland like three years ago <laughs> and we rescheduled it three times and somebody threw up the night before all yeah. three times. Um, so we never made it to Legoland. So I don't know. Apparently the kids are too old now. Okay. My kid's crying. Okay. All right, guys, go leave a review. We will send out some gift cards on the other side of that. Happy 50th episode. Yeah. Thank you for loving us, supporting us, and we'll be back with more next week. Bye. Bye.